Moreover, it soon became clear that these two bodies of knowledge differed in other ways. The knowledge that H.M. could not store, the new knowledge he could not store, pertained to people, places, and objects. This is called now called explicit or declarative forms of memory storage, and this requires conscious participation, a conscious recall of the image of a face, the name of a person, the name of an object, spatial location. Knowledge, such as perceptual skills, motor skills, they are completely unconscious. So when you first learn how to ride a bicycle, or you learn how to hit a tennis ball, or you learn how to play a piano, obviously you pay a lot of attention, it requires conscious participation. But after a while, the body takes over. You feel it in your muscles. If you tell yourself while you ride the bicycle, now I'm putting the left leg, now I'm putting the right leg, you will fall off the bicycle. You don't tell yourself when you shift the car, now I have to move these muscles, now I have to move that muscle. It becomes automatic. And much of our activity, in fact, involves implicit forms of memory storage. Moreover, it became clear from the work of a number of people, initially Brenda Milner and then Larry Squire and others, that not only does this involve two different logical systems, but this involves two different brain systems. The explicit memory storage, that which involves people, places, and things, that which is conscious, that which H.M. lacks, involves what is called the medial temporal lobe system. That involves the medial temporal lobe, and at its core, it involves the hippocampus. The implicit system, which involves perceptual and motor learning, this involves the cerebellum, and various sensory motor systems that are recruited for the specific task, and it does not involve the hippocampus, and it does not involve the medial temporal lobe. 